Hi, I'm Chris Wardlaw for CarGurus, and yes, that is a Genesis park behind me. But this year, it's no longer the Hyundai Genesis. Instead, it is the Genesis G80. Now, if you haven't heard, Hyundai has officially launched a luxury brand. So, starting in 2017, Genesis is to Hyundai what Lexus is to Toyota and what Audi is to Volkswagen Group. Now, eventually, the plan is for Genesis to have three sedans, two SUVs, and a performance model of some kind. For now, though, Genesis sells this car, the G80, and a more expensive flagship sedan called the G90. Both are sold through Hyundai dealerships, but both come with extra perks, including valet pickup and drop-off service for when it's time to get your exclusive free scheduled maintenance. For some people, that might be a major perk. For others, maybe not so much. Whatever happens with Genesis, if it fails to gather speed and succeed, it won't be the G80's fault. This is a nice car. Let's go for a drive and discuss. The G80 starts at $42,350, which is higher than last year's Genesis. But the car does have more standard equipment, and for the first three years and 36,000 miles, it now comes with several free service packages. My test car is the version with the 5 liter V8 engine, which includes every possible upgrade as standard equipment. The price tag is $55,500. Now, let me put that into perspective for you. A base Mercedes-Benz E300 with a turbocharged four-cylinder engine and without a single upgrade, not even metallic paint, is going to cost you $53,075. So is there value in the Genesis G80? Absolutely. I also happen to think that the G80 is one of the best looking cars in its segment. It sits on a rear wheel drive platform, and so it's got a sleek, tailored cab rearward appearance. Inside, Genesis gets the materials and the design exactly right, although I do think that the right center air vent looks like it was installed upside down. The problems inside the car are related primarily to the control layout and the controls themselves. In some cases, the switch gear just looks and feels too much like a Hyundai. In other cases, there's just too much of it, too much functional overlap and redundancy, and that can lead to confusion and distraction. Now, on a positive note, the stereo and the climate systems are easy to operate thanks to a multitude of knobs and buttons. It's just that I wish their locations were reversed. Hyundai's Blue Link infotainment system is easy to understand and to use, but I do have a couple of complaints that are related to my specific test car. Sometimes the radio station preset buttons proved unresponsive, and that was a little bit maddening. Also, the navigation map never displayed traffic conditions, even when I had the correct box checked in the programming menu. And when you're driving around in Los Angeles, that gets frustrating really fast. Now, interior comfort levels do impress, although the center console armrest could be a little bit softer. My test car's driver's seat offers an extending thigh support cushion, and both front seats are heated and ventilated. Now the rear seats are super comfortable too, but Genesis fails to provide heated rear seats, sunshades, or even a USB port for rear passengers. And those are all glaring oversights in a car that has a price tag like this one. Now here's another curiosity. The G80 doesn't have a split folding rear seat. There is a ski pass through, but if the 15.3 cubic foot trunk isn't big enough, you're not gonna be able to expand it. Now Genesis offers a choice between a 311 horsepower V6 engine and a 420 horsepower V8 engine. An all wheel drive system is optional, but it's only available with the V6. Now my test car's got the five liter V8, which produces swift and silent acceleration. Just enough of a rumble makes its way into the G80's remarkably quiet cabin to remind the driver that eight pistons are pumping away under the hood. And while you might assume that this car would get lousy gas mileage, I actually averaged 19.3 miles per gallon on my test route, which beats the EPA's estimate of 18 miles per gallon in combined driving. The eight-speed automatic is an excellent transmission. Three driving modes are available, and while I did not use the eco mode, I did try the sport mode. And it resolves a complaint that I have with delayed downshifts for passing when the car is placed in normal mode. Plus, it also firms up the steering. Despite the 19-inch wheels and 245 40 series tires that come with the V8 engine, the G80 supplies a supple ride quality. What it needs, though, is an adaptive damping suspension so that 
when you switch to sport mode and you drive with enthusiasm, the car's body motions are better controlled. Still, I had a lot of fun tossing this car around on my test route. It rotates nicely in corners, the brakes withstood abuse in high temperatures, and the paddle shifters helped to make the car more engaging. With some better tires and a tighter suspension, the G80 could be a legitimate sports sedan. On the open road, it effortlessly devours miles while occupants enjoy the comfortable and quiet cabin. The G80 also shrugs off decaying city streets and it proves easy to parallel park. Still, the G80's reversing camera is not as sophisticated as what Hyundai offers in its Santa Fe Sport Utility Vehicle, which is really kind of tough to understand. With the switch to Genesis branding, the G80 gains several safety-related driver assistance features as standard equipment. They work pretty well, although the lane departure warning system has accuracy problems whenever roads narrow from two lanes to one, or sometimes when they expand from one lane to two lanes of travel in the same direction. One of my favorite things about the G80 is its heads-up display. This is one of the best in the industry. It's capable of conveying a wealth of information in a very small space, and that includes your blind spot warnings, which gives you an extra measure of confidence in heavy traffic. By the way, in case you're wondering, the G80 is rated a top safety pick plus by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, and it earns a five-star rating from the federal government in crash tests. As I stated right up front, the Genesis G80 is a nice car and I like it quite a bit. It isn't perfect though, and several of its shortcomings seem like easy fixes that should have been made before this new luxury brand launched. Worse, because it's now pitched against the mid-sized luxury cars that are increasingly superior as far as technology and creature comforts are concerned, the G80 could be forced to rely upon bang for the buck in order to sell, and that's exactly the same value proposition it offered when it was a Hyundai. Now, when it was a Hyundai, this was a pretty impressive car, but expectations are different for a luxury brand, and as a luxury vehicle, it's just kind of average. For more details about the G80, be sure to check out my full review on cargurus.com, and if you found this review helpful, please share this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For all of us at Cargurus, thank you for watching.